So we can use connectedness now. We'll see various examples of connectedness and properties which will tell us things are connected and so on. Okay, but mainly rather than concrete examples, we'll see ways, general ways of showing things are connected, which will be useful and nice. And it's quite relaxing to prove these things. Nothing is really hard. So we'll start with an example which will uh, where we do things purely by definition okay so so x is let's say set with cofinite topology then what we know is a contained in x is uh, open and closed exactly when well it's open if it's cofinite and it's closed if it's finite so if a is finite and x minus a is also finite okay so therefore both these exist therefore x not connected implies that a is finite and x x minus a is finite which implies that x is finite conversely if x is finite it's usually not connected except when it has no points or one point. So if it has at least two points, we can work out on the converse. Yeah, I won't write down anything because it's simple. Okay. So recall again that connected means, means that A contained in X open and closed, which people call various things. We can call it open closed, which I'll use sometimes, or clopen which is also used, closed and open. Okay, So again, a reminder, they're not opposites and it, most sets are neither closed nor open. Okay, So if A and closed, open and closed implies that A is either empty or A is uh, X. Okay, But now the complement of A will also be open and closed. Okay, So this is equivalent to X minus A, open and closed. Or if I know A is open, so this is equivalent to A open and X minus A. Open, okay. So if I, like, I can call this B or something, okay. Uh, so we we'll can characterize X minus A as being disjoint from A and the union being X. And this is equivalent to A is open, uh, sorry, closed, and X minus A is closed. Characterized because if A is open and its complement is open, it follows that A is also closed. And similarly, if A is closed, its complement is closed tells you A is open. So in both cases, it's open closed. Okay, and also note, that B equals X minus A is equivalent to X is A union B with A intersection B empty. Okay, so instead of writing X minus A, I can write B, but I have to add this property. So this immediately gives you the following. I'll call it a theorem because it's important enough. X is connected. if and only if x equals a union b, there's going to be two theorems with a intersection b is empty and a comma b open and let me put in parenthesis a different color theorem or a comma b closed implies that x equals a or x equals b. Now in both these cases, if both are open or both are closed, we have x equals a or x equals b. And equivalently, I'm going to have it as orange because it doesn't match these. So you can say four theorems in all. Uh, x, uh, sorry, uh, a is empty or b is empty. One of them is empty. Okay, 
So you have two possible hypotheses. X is a disjoint union of open sets or X is a disjoint union of closed sets and two possible conclusions that one of them is all of X or one of them is empty and all these four statements are true by the above. Okay, so all these four statements are true by the above. This is useful and uh, so a few more useful things. So let's uh, see. So we have talked about decomposing uh, into finitely many open sets uh, into two open sets. How about finitely many open or closed sets? Let me state this for closed sets. Okay, so X is connected implies, well, there is a converse of this by definition if you just state it correctly. If X equals F1 union Fn with Fj closed and pairwise disjoint, every pair is disjoint, then x equals uh, fj for some j. And equivalently, everything except fj is empty. So this was a more succinct way of writing it. And the proof is clear. So the converse is true as long as you insist n is greater than or equal to 2. If n is 1, of course, this doesn't tell you anything. Okay, so of course, the proof is just the definition plus the fact that union of finitely many closed sets is closed. So x is f1 union f2 union fn. So either x equals f1. So here we are done or X is F2 union Fn in which case we proceed inductively. Now as soon as you see this proof you should realize two things. I mean two things are suggestions. This won't work for infinitely many or arbitrary collections. Clearly not because uh, points are closed in say real numbers and the real numbers are connected but they're a union of points. So you can't take infinitely many closed sets but since we looked at unions you expect nicer things to happen for open sets and indeed I'll call this also a theorem that's easy and here since we'll use this we'll state it in apparently greater generality. Okay so suppose A is contained in X is connected. And for emphasis, let me write example, it could be that A equals X itself is connected. But your whole space may not be connected. We are looking at a connected subspace. By the way, real numbers have many non-connected subspace. So converse is also not true. If a space is connected, subspaces need not be connected. But let's take the generality of a connected subspace of a space. Whether X is connected or not is irrelevant. It could go either way, but we need this is connected. and a is contained in union alpha in A of U alpha, where U alpha contained in X are open and pairwise disjoint. If, if a connected set is contained in a union of open sets, then it's actually contained in one of them. Then A is contained in U alpha naught for some alpha naught. Okay, so this is a way in which connectivity will be used heavily, not just in this course, maybe not so much in this, but as you use topology further when you study manifolds, the algebraic topology and CW complexes, whatever else you uh, study with topology. Okay, So a connected set is covered by op open disjoint sets, it's contained in one of them. And proof is that if A is empty done, empty then is uh, easy, this is true. For rather trivial reasons, it's contained in one of them. Otherwise, A intersection U alpha naught is non-empty for some alpha naught. So because A is contained in the union, if it has at least one point that's contained in one of them, call that alpha naught. So for some alpha naught belongs to A. Therefore, A is going to be a intersection union of, uh, sorry, U was an unfortunate choice because it looks just like union, but hopefully U alpha uh, not here. So I'm going to write it as this set union. So this is of course open in A. 
ah sorry <laughs> fortunately for me <laughs> this is an intersection so it doesn't get confused with u's so i look at a intersection u alpha not we know open in a and this is non empty union the let's look at everything else alpha in a but alpha not equal to alpha not and i look at a intersection u alpha okay so if i call this v and uh, so so let's call this v1 and let's call this v2 okay so this is so you and what we know is v1 v2 are open in a and this joint so this implies that uh, so we we know also that v1 is not empty this implies v2 is empty so or a does not intersect any u alphas so it has to be actually contained in u alpha not since it's contained in all their unions and it's disjoint from everything but one you are contained in all of them okay so uh, we use the fact that union of open sets is open this as i said is a useful result now a next bunch of results which will be quite easy to prove but will be extremely useful will tell us how we can patch together connected sets so perhaps a picture is justified if i have a bunch of connected sets well if i just had two connected sets like this the union need not be connected in fact won't be but as long if they overlap with each other many of them the result will be connected you can see that that is if they have a common point uh, in them and there'll be another version of this we'll see these two versions of these and the first one will let us also de define connected components which we will see in the next video okay so let me note the following i'm calling all these theorems because they are important next i'll is not so important but so here's a theorem if x is union this time it's not going to be a disjoint union in fact uh, x is union of x alpha x0 belongs to x and x0 belongs to x alpha for all alpha in a so i have a space okay so i better since the sentence is getting long is better say suppose this is the union x0 belongs to x and it's in all of them if x alpha is connected for all alpha in a then uh, uh x is connected so if you glue if you have connected sets that overlap in a point then the result is connected so as in many cases rather than closed and open sets it's most convenient to start with a union of open sets so suppose x is let's say v1 union v2 vi open and disjoint okay and now suppose without loss of generality this point x0 belongs to v1 v1 is the point containing this okay then what we know is that then v1 intersection x alpha is not empty for all alpha okay and now what do we know by this is as x alpha is connected and we can decompose x alpha as v1 intersection x alpha union v2 intersection x alpha both of these are open and the union is a disjoint union okay in fact let me use the disjoint union symbol here to emphasize that so this is a symbol for disjoint union x alpha is a disjoint union of this set and this set okay and x alpha is this well it's connected so it implies that v1 intersection x alpha is empty or v2 intersection x alpha is empty which implies that v2 intersection x alpha is empty because we know v1 x intersection x alpha is non empty and so x v alpha is actually contained in v1 so the particular thing that contains the special point thus x alpha is contained in v1 
for all alpha, which implies that x is contained in v1. Okay, I'll state another result which is nice, but we'll just leave the proof as an exercise. Very similar to this. So suppose x is the uh, some z union, such a union, alpha in x, uh, alpha in some collection A of x alpha, and z and x alpha connected, and z intersection x alpha is non-empty for all alpha in A. So here now we have a connected set and we have a bunch of sets which may not overlap at a point, but they all must intersect the common connected set. Okay, so if uh, for all alpha in A, then X is connected. Okay, so here I will say uh, this proof I leave as an exercise. It follows essentially the same lines as the previous result. You take a union of two sets which are open and disjoint. At most one can intersect Z and must contain Z because Z is connected. And uh, so that particular one, let's say V1, is also going to contain all of the X alphas because it, uh, uh, from the fact that X alphas are connected, they can't intersect both V1 and V2. And so if they were contained in V2 and Z is contained in V1, they can't intersect each other. So I just orally gave the proof. And this proof is an exercise. So we see that we can construct lots of connected sets by gluing together uh, connected sets. Okay. Uh, now while this was elementary, we need a couple of other results which are quite important. So we'll see them right away before we turn to connected components, which is which we'll use the theorem here. So here's another useful theorem. And when we come to the topologies, sine curve and so on, we'll actually use this. So suppose A contained in X is connected, then its closure A bar is connected. Note the con interior need not be connected. So for example, I could have two, a connected set like this, and the interior is the two interiors of the disk, and that's not connected. But a closure of a connected set is automatically connected. This is useful. This time we'll write it as a union of, uh, so to, we'll write, so suppose A bar equals F1 union F2, and the letters should suggest they're not open, but instead Fi closed and disjoint. Remember A is connected, okay, so in A bar, in fact, hence in X, because the closure is closed. So these are closed and disjoint in A bar, hence so they are closed in X itself. Okay, so, a, a, so we have subsets of A bar, so they are themselves closed in X. And now what we notice that A is A intersection F1, uh, disjoint union, A intersection F2. So these are both closed in A. So this implies, because A is connected, that A intersection Fi is, uh, is all of A for some I. Say A intersection F1 equals A. This implies that A is contained in F1. But note, as F1 is closed, not just in A bar but in X, so, and A is contained in F1. This implies that the closure is contained in F1. That was the property of the closure. It's the intersection of all closed sets containing A. So it's the smallest closed sets containing A, okay, as required. So what we were required to show is that, according to that forked many theorems, is that if we had uh, A, a if we had closed disjoint sets that covered A bar, then one of them is actually equal to all of A bar, and indeed that is the case. And the final theorem, which is really very important, maybe one of the most, because it implies the intermediate value theorem. Again, you could apply this for A equals X, but I'll state it like this. Suppose A contained in X is connected, 
and uh, f from x to y is a map. So if I have a connected set and I look at the image, then f of a is connected. So if something is in a single piece, so it's map under this, this is a uh, single piece. Okay. So the corollary of this is that if f is a homeomorphism, its image is also connected under the homeomorphism. So connectedness is a topological property, meaning if f is a homeomorphism from x to y, so I'll just write corollary here, f from x to y homeomorphism, and then x connected uh, implies y connected. And a homeomorphism has an inverse, which is a homeomorphism, hence the converse as well. But this is much stronger. It just doesn't need a homeomorphism. Just the image of connected sets are connected. Okay, typical topological properties will not be preserved under just taking an image, but uh, connectedness is. It's because it's one piece. You can wander within A, you can wander within the image. And the proof of this is actually very rather easy. So suppose f of A is the disjoint union of V1, V2. Okay, now uh, let me. Uh, let me use the sub -basis, subspace topology quite explicitly. So in, it's the disjoint union of open sets in A. Okay, so let's, let me just do it directly. Okay, let me change strategy slightly. I was going to write it as disjoint union of open sets, but then you have to say that if they're disjoint in a subspace, we have to find a disjoint set uh, in the whole space. So, but instead we just use the subspace topology and suppose we'll call it B contained in F of A is open and closed in F of A, okay, in the subspace topology. So it's the intersection of F of A with some open set and with some other closed set in A, okay. Then it follows by definitions that F inverse of B well, inverse image of an open set and a closed set under continuous maps are open and closed. So F inverse of B, this is contained in A, is open and closed. But A is connected, so which implies that F inverse of B is either A or F inverse of B is the empty set. And this, of course, implies that B is either F of A or B is empty as claimed. So the image of an open set is, uh, of a connected set is connected. This is, as op images of open, uh, open sets, for example, need not be open, closed sets need not be closed and so on. This is specific to connectivity, but an extremely important property.